Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, we're going to be installing the radiator in the back of Ratchet here. We're not going to be installing it to the point where it's plumbed in and it's filled with fluid and it's ready to go. In this video, I'm only going to be physically installing it into Ratchet. And the reason that this video is only going to cover that is because this is going to be what I would call a non-typical type of installation, especially for me. So it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for me and it's going to be somewhat of a slow process. So this video is only going to be about that. So I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but in an earlier video, I talked about radiator placement and I talked about possibly putting it back here in the back window. I also talked about possibly putting it right behind the rear seats. And I literally said in that video that one thing I will not do is integrate it into a rear wing. And as you can see, <laughs> I am literally looking at integrating it into a rear wing. So what happened is that other video was a couple of months ago. And since then, you know, as I'm working on different aspects of the Baja, I'm thinking about and picturing other things during the process. And I kept, I kept thinking about the radiator here. And number one, one concern was that that would be dangerous to have the radiator right behind me. And I agree with that. But by the time I had the seat belts in here and all that, that would have put the radiator all the way back here and at that point it's just taking up too much too much real estate here then the next option was to put it in the back window and I could still do that 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 would work but when I considered putting it into a rear wing and I got to tell you I do like big big wings that are down low on vehicles like this I don't know exactly how this is going to look and how this is gonna pan out. But when I thought about it, having the radiator back here, even though it's it's clearly hanging behind the vehicle, like if I got rear-ended or something, this, this radiator would just disintegrate. It, it would be destroyed. And I'm building it knowing that. I'm building it assuming this is um, a consumable or, or in a bad rack or a rollover or something the radiator is just going to be destroyed. That's There's no way around that. I'm not going to build enough structure back here to protect all that. I don't want to do that. But when I mocked it up and when I thought about it over time, and it does remind me of my radio controlled cars because the radio controlled cars usually had, you know, pretty obnoxious wings in the back. And maybe the little kid in me wants Ratchet here to have a little bit of that look. As a matter of fact, I can tell you that I do. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to go with this yet, but um, I'm gonna move forward as though I am. Meaning, I'm going to, I've already been, you know, you can see that I've got this mocked up and I've, I've drawn a little bit of what I think the side of it would look like. I'm going to create the structure back here that would hold the radiator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this so that it pivots up. Because I don't I don't want to lose all this access to the engine. So I'm gonna create a structure here that if you unbolt it from down below, it'll have some pivot points up here and it'll roll up out of the way. So if I want to work on the engine and get all this radiator stuff out of the way, I can do that. And it'll have some bars coming across here, it'll hold the radiator. And then there will be some provisions for this on the side, which is just for looks, but I gotta, I gotta tell you, I love the way it looks. And then there will be something back here. There will be cooling fans up here. The cooling fans are gonna be pushers, not pullers, because there really isn't room underneath. And then it will also, like this will probably be fiberglass. The piece up here will probably be fiberglass. And then there will be some trim pieces in here just to make it look more like a wing that will also be fiberglass. And then there will be probably brake lights and turn signals, or at least some amber turn signals or something, fiberglassed into here. Not that, I don't really know if this is gonna be street legal. If I, it's not gonna be street legal, but I still wanna have brake lights. And I think I might still wanna have turn lights or at least some flashing amber lights or something. So all of that will be incorporated into this. And then the, the idea is 
The concept is if I don't like it, I can just take it off and put the radiator in the back window. Or if I decide I want a bigger radiator or just a different radiator, this piece, this whole piece will be unboltable because it's going to pivot. It will be unboltable. So at any point in time, if I want to make changes to this, I can just unbolt it, throw this away and build something new. So it kind of allows me the option of 100% custom milk, custom ability for the radiators. So it'll allow, it'll allow me to kind of evolve that over time. Whereas if I work in the back window, I'm limited by the space of the back window, but back here, I, I kind of don't have any limitations. So those are, those are the reasons that I came up with as to why I wanted to do this. And like I said, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't necessarily love the look of a big engine protruding out from the back of a Baja. That's why I put a lot of effort into squeezing this in here real tight. I don't feel like hanging this radiator off the back is that same look because, because it's all up high, to me, I don't, it doesn't feel like it's just real long. As a matter of fact, I feel like it takes the body line and it kind of lowers it and, and draws it out a little bit more like a teardrop. And in my eyes, that looks good. I like that look. So anyways, that's a lot of talking, me trying to explain to you guys why this, why I'm doing it this way. But I, I just think it's going to work well mechanically. And I also think it's going to look pretty cool. And let's be honest, I'm trying to make Ratchet to look pretty cool. I mean, I want him to be very, very high performance, but I also want him to kind of look like an RC car a little bit. And this this radiator, I think, will do that. So, so it's a little bit unfortunate that I, I just kind of threw in this clip of me welding on these tabs because there was, there was a lot of work leading up to me figuring out where these tabs go so that it worked with the radiator, moved the moved it up high enough to clear the engine and then of course just making sure that they're level and equal from side to side so when i just jump into something like this and here i am welding it up you guys miss out on a lot of squaring up and measurements and all that but that stuff's really really hard to uh to video so regardless this is me welding in the tabs but there was a lot of prep leading up to this okay now we got to fast forward about three days I hate when I do that to you guys and I skip out on some filming, but when I was uh, welding this up, this is the piece that the radiator's gonna go inside. When I was welding this up, I was doing it in such small little chunks here and there that it just becomes really, really difficult to film. So anyways, let's just get you caught up to speed. This is the frame that the radiator's gonna go into and the leading edges of it there have um, a flat piece of metal with a hole for a 3 8 bolt. And that's gonna bolt in here. So let me get that propped up into position. Okay, so here's what I've got so far. I've got that little frame bolted in the place here and I've got, I welded these tabs solid onto the, the engine cage here, but this is the part where it pivots. This can be unbolted and I've got a uh, Delrin washer, Delrin washer, Delrin washer so that I can bolt this in nice and tight so there's no rattling or anything like that, but then it will slide on these Delrin washers so that you can fold it up, lay it back down when you need to. And then the radiator lines will come down and they'll curve around right here and there'll be flexible lines right here so that as this pivots up, those will just bend. Same thing, I'll have one line coming down here and the other line over here. So when you pivot that up, those will just bend. But what I need to do at this point is this is all just floating out here. So I'm gonna create two supports, one on this bar, one on this bar. And they're just gonna, they're gonna have a tab where they bolt on. They have to bolt on because when this flips up, these bars will have to come out. They can't just, they can't just pivot or anything. So I'm gonna have a bar that comes out here and it's probably gonna have like a 30 degree bend 
and then it'll come up to here. So it'll come down a little bit, bend and kick in there. And I'm gonna do that because I wanna get this, this frame nice and solid before I start worrying about uh, getting the radiator to fit in here. So usually when I make a part like this, the first thing I do is essentially just guess at it, just kind of take a stab at it. So here I'm kind of estimating the angle and just getting a rough idea of how long of a piece I would need for this. I also measured the angle. I decided that the angle would probably be 35 degrees. So now I'm just cutting this. This is one inch tube. It's just ERW, nothing special. I'm cutting it to the length that I estimated it would be just by taking my tape measure and just kind of cranking a little bit of an angle in there and at least getting me started. You know, if I need to trim it or something, so be it, but this gets me started. So now I've got the two pieces that I cut and I'll take them up to the tubing bender. And like I said, I just, I put a protractor up there and I, I looked at it and I, I just kind of said to myself, 35 degrees seems about right. I mean, I, I know that seems kind of crude, but for, for stuff like this, that's usually what I do. So I'm cranking these both to 35 degrees and then I'll take it down. I won't show this part, but I'll before I bent the second one, here's what it looks like. I'll actually take it down and, and double check and see how it looks. And now here I've crimped, or not crimped, I just take the end and I just kind of smash it down a little bit in my press. And then I take those tabs and I just kind of hammer them in there. I mean, they're measured out, so they're hammered in the same distance and I've made sure that they're straight and all that. But then I just tack them in place and then just weld it up. And it actually makes a really... I, I think a pretty clean, real strong connection point that you can bolt to, because I don't want to have to put a heim or anything on something like this. That's I, I think that's just too much. And here's the finished product. Look at that, it's still, still glowing red. I wish the camera would focus a little, a little faster, but that gives you an idea of how strong it is. It's actually a really strong connection point done that way. So now I'm starting to make the pieces that are going to go on the side of the wing to hold like the side plates. And I, I just took, this is a piece of one inch by one inch by two inch and I just drilled a hole in the middle and now you can just kind of cut a v-notch out and then cut them in half and, and that makes two pieces which you know, I think when you clean them up with a grinder and stuff, I think they look they look pretty good and they certainly certainly do the job. And now I have already tacked this structure up, but what I'm tacking on now are those pieces that I just cut, and I've got them them on this piece of plastic because it's it's nice and flat. So I've got this frame on here nice and flat and then I can tack these pieces on and I use those blocks of steel so that I'm positive that they're they're completely 90 degrees up from the frame because I was a little worried that when I would do that you know they wouldn't be perfectly straight and that would look pretty silly. So I put a lot of effort into getting these 90 degrees and symmetrical to each other you can see I'm using a, a cut piece of conduit there to mark the distance between the two. And I like to do that because that's more accurate. For me, that's more accurate than measuring it from side to side. Because if I measure it, it could easily get a, a 32nd or maybe a 16th off. But if you use the same cut conduit like that, it's, it's totally even from side to side. And now I'm running around and uh, I'm just welding this thing up solid because I think at this point it's pretty much ready to go. Now watch this part right here. Pay attention. I'm putting the I'm putting the, the thing on. You see Kevin is down on the ground right there. Watch Kevin. And when I turn around right here, ooh, I just kicked him. Oh, man, I felt so bad. Oh, you can't really see it in fast forward here, but he was just laying down. 
you know, just wanting to be near me. And I turned around and I'm wearing those damn boots. <laughs> I kicked him. That sucked. Anyways, uh, here I am bolting up the frame, which is awesome because it's, it's starting to feel like an actual structure at this point. You know, it always gets a little more fun as your vision is starting to come together. Now look at this. This is Colorado at this time of the year. When you wake up in the morning, it's like 45, 50 degrees. But then in the afternoon, it's like 90. If you notice in that last clip, I was wearing boots, sweatpants, sweatshirt. I was cold. And now this, because this video is taking like uh, almost two weeks to make. I think it's a little over a week and a half. So I'm going through these big climate changes as these pieces come together. Okay, now I've got my frame in there. And, you know, it, it pivots on this bolt here. So if you take... If you take these pieces out, then you can take this and fold it up, and then I'll have access to the front of the engine or if I, whatever I need to be working on. I just, I wanna make sure that this can get up out of the way if I need it to. Plus, because this is kind of, you know, breakaway, not really much of a structural piece, I wanna be able to obviously unbolt it if I need to fix it or change it or whatever if I, get rear-ended or roll over or or whatever happens. So I have, this right now is just eighth inch masonite. This is not permanent. This is really just on there because I had some masonite here and I wanted to get an idea of how that was gonna look. I, I do actually like that profile that I have there, so I'll probably stick with that. But I need to either make some nice fiberglass pieces for this or there's gotta be some Pla some nice plastic pieces that that people use for number plates or something if you guys have any ideas on something like that give me a heads up because since it's kind of a breakaway piece i don't necessarily want to put the effort into making it out of fiberglass if it's something that just might get damaged if it was some sort of plastic that i could just cut it out and bolt it on there that would probably be best but now that i've got the frame set up and i'm i'm real happy with that i don't I don't know how, how much you guys can see how it looks, but I, I actually really like the way that it looks. I know it hangs off there a little bit, but I think it's got a nice, a nice look to it. So now I need to get this radiator in here. This radiator, like I said, it's made for a Jeep, so it's got all sorts of pieces on here for the Jeep. So I'm gonna take it, take it outside. I'm gonna grind all this stuff off, just grind it smooth so that I'm starting from scratch. Most of it's underneath here. I'm just going to cut all of this out, even the filler piece here. I'm just going to cut all this out and weld in a flat piece there. So that basically I'm starting from scratch. All this stuff I'm going to cut out of here and just clean it up. And then I have a new um, a radiator cap welding piece. So I'm going to weld that on there. And then I have a, this is an AN16 weld on bung. This is actually the, a stainless steel one that's going to get welded onto the inlet of the water pump. I need to pick up a uh, aluminum one for the radiator. I don't have that yet, so I'm not going to be doing that in this video. But the back of my cylinder heads, each head has an AN10 fitting that's coming off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an elbow coming off of each cylinder head. Then I've got two AN10 aluminum bungs that I'm going to weld onto the other side of the radiator. But what I did is I took the, uh, the surface area of an AN10, which is 0.87 square inches. And I multiplied that by two because I've got two of these. So these two AN10 fittings going into the radiator are good for 1.73 square inches of volume. So that's how much room they have. And then if I take the area of 1 AN12, that is 1.13. So 1 AN12 flows less than 2 AN10s. So I didn't want to do that because this is already not much. So 1 AN16 flows 2.22 square inches. So this one AN16 flows more than two of these AN10s, 
but these two AN10s flow more than one AN12. So I hope that made sense. <laughs> so because of that, I'm going to have the AN16 going back to the pump, and then I'm going to have the two AN10s coming from the cylinder heads into the radiator. Now I'm out here literally cutting this brand new radiator to pieces just because it's, you know, like I said, it's for a Jeep Cherokee and I liked the size of it, just the overall size, so I wanted to work with this, but all the stuff that's on it, because what I'm doing here is so custom, I just, I just have to cut it off. Kind of, kind of sucks. I mean, I wish, I wish I could use more of it, but it's just none of this will work out. So I just got to cut it all up, grind it smooth, and uh, basically weld on exactly what I want, which ends up being a lot of a lot of welding. So now, you know, I've cut pretty much everything off of this radiator. I'm, I'm, kind of honestly starting from scratch on it. So what I've done is, for this piece that had all of those pieces on it, I just created a piece that covers up the entire thing, and now I'm welding it in place just so that on this tank, I'm essentially just starting from scratch. I cut out that whole top plate, I just weld in my own here, and then that'll give me a nice clean surface to start from scratch. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of welding, and I'm not a big fan of aluminum welding, but I, I just, I don't know of any other way to, to really do it. Uh, aside from, I guess, buying a custom radiator, but that's hard to do when, when this is so custom to begin with. I mean, as I'm doing this, I don't even know, I don't even know, like, I don't have a plan until I'm actually building it, so. So here I'm welding in those two AN10 bungs. So the cylinder heads are each gonna have an AN10 line coming from them, and this is where they're gonna tap in underneath the radiator. And I'm just putting that steel block on there to hold it in place so that as I tack it, it doesn't, it doesn't roll up. Actually, I just put that second tack there so that I can get rid of that block because that block is a nuisance. I like welding bungs like this because they're nice and thick. So they're actually pretty easy to weld and usually the welds look pretty good as opposed to welding thinner aluminum together. That's usually much more problematic. And now here uh, you can see the filler cap is all welded in. I'm preheating this with the torch. You don't see this a lot, but usually when I when I first start welding aluminum, if it's cold, if I haven't been welding it yet that day, I'll heat it up with the torch first. It makes it a lot easier to weld if it's already nice and hot. Because aluminum pulls, pulls heat away so fast. Welding cold aluminum is hard because it pulls all that heat away. But if you saturate it with heat to begin with, with a propane or MAP torch like that, then it's a lot easier to weld. And what I'm welding on here is just one of these tabs that's gonna hold the radiator in place on that frame that I just welded up. All right guys, that is it for this video. This is as far as I'm going to get with it. The physical installation is done. I don't have all the fittings for the hoses. Some of that stuff is ordered. So I'm not gonna worry about finishing that. And of course, I've still gotta get the electric fans and figure out how I'm going to integrate all that but not worried about that with that with this video this video it's just about the installation so let me pop you off the tripod there and give you a little look as to what I got here so I do have one hose here and this is running around to the back of the cylinder head I've just got this one so that I can kind of get an idea of how I'm going to run this stuff I will have there will be another hose coming through here they'll be clamped together and I believe I'll probably have a bracket coming off of here that will hold this hose rigid so that when it's, number one, if it's bouncing around, or number two, when I flip the radiator up, I don't want it to put stress on the AN fittings down there, so I'll probably have a bracket here, but I'm gonna wait 
until I have both hoses there so I can see how I want to run those. Come on. That's freaking cool, isn't it? When I'm done, radiator comes down, bolted into place. What's that? You got to work on the engine again? Oop. Up she goes. Okay, so first thing, it can go forward a little bit more. I don't, there's nothing to stop it yet. I probably need to come up with a way that you push it forward and then it, it stops on something, whether it, it hits a stop or something. Right now, if you push it too far forward, it runs into the body first, and I don't want it to ever crush that. Right now, it pretty much stays in place because the bolts down here are pretty tight, so you know there doesn't it doesn't have a lot of slop. Right now, the AN10 hose just kind of bends and rolls. That's all going to change as the fitting back there is tighter. This is braced, so there will be some things that change there. You can see on the radiator here. Here's my other AN10 fitting. Here is a fitting for a uh, coolant temperature sensor, and then here's the other AN10 elbow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a coolant temperature sensor on each end of the radiator. So this is the incoming side of the radiator, and that's the leaving side of the radiator. This one should match more of the engine temperature, but I've always been curious how much of a temperature drop you get across your radiator. And since I've got the Infinity ECU and I can I can add a bunch of extra sensors, I decided it would be cool to have one over here. So this bung up here is for another engine coolant temperature sensor here. I added a little well here. I don't know why I did. I probably shouldn't have. Um, it's going to have the AN16 bung that welds on here. I don't have that bung yet, so I didn't do that yet. What I should have done is just welded the bung onto the bottom like I did these, and then bought an AN1690. But for some reason, I don't know what my problem is. I welded this well on there. I was thinking I wanted more volume, and that's why I put the well on here, but I don't know. It was it was so much damn welding. Welding all this up, welding this patch on. This is where the neck was for the uh, other radiator. I had to plug that. And then over here, of course, I had to weld on this entire piece. I had to weld in this bung, that bung, that bung, and then I had to weld this cap and all of that. It was It was just... It was so much. It was like two days of welding on this damn thing. But regardless, I have it at this point. I still have to pressure test it and whatnot, but I'm going to wait on stuff like that until I have all of the fittings so that I can test the fittings as well. But anyways, that's what it looks like when it flips up. I do think it's pretty cool because you've got really good access back here. Um, I guess we'll see how it is when it's all actually done. But uh, let me drop it back down. That's it for this video guys. I just wanted to show you how I was making this radiator wing contraption because I wasn't really 100% sure how it was going to end up when I started it. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys like the wing. I hope this is helping you guys with whatever you might be working on and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.